Hey stranger, I'm hoping you can hear me okay because it's quite a windy day today. So I'm hoping the audio is getting picked up okay. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update. What's been happening for the past few months? Well, let's see. I'm 21 and a half weeks pregnant now. I've been very unwell. Besides morning sickness, I had a horrible chest infection like borderline pneumonia. I had it for, a, I think this is week six and this is the first week I've actually been able to breathe. So that's been fun. Heidi's, ne Heidi's next to me blowing bubbles. <laughs> um, and my lack of breathing has impacted my ability to really do anything. So not much has happened. We're in the middle of winter. It's very cold, although today's quite a mild day in comparison to what it's been. And you would have seen some footage of me starting a fire. And I wanted to record that and share that with you because it's been really interesting. So we don't have gas plumbed to this property. There is no gas to this property. And you know, if you're Australian and you're watching this, then you know that most people heat their houses with gas. Yeah. It's effective and it's cheap. Well, there's no gas pipes in our area. So it's not an option. We only have electricity as our only main source of power. Unless we get an external gas tank, but we haven't thought about doing that yet. Now, if you're going to heat your house electronically, as in, you know, with electric heaters, it's extremely expensive, especially given that we get into negative, you know, degrees here, as in minus zero Celsius. Um, I don't know what the equivalent of that is in Fahrenheit. I'll stick a, I'll stick an image up here. <laughs> um, so it is cold. Like, for example, this, I'm sitting... Uh, at the front and there's this little water fountain thing here and a bird bath that you know was part of the old property that freezes over in the morning it's a solid ice so it's cold and the house only has insulation in the areas we've renovated which is the main lounge dining um, kitchen areas if you've been watching our renovation videos which I know one hasn't happened in a while but if you've been watching them you know that only the main part of the house has been renovated none of the bedrooms have been renovated which means none of the rooms have insulation it gets cold now we do have a be careful don't go too close <laughs> now we do have a split system wall mounted electronic you know air conditioner which does heat and cold and we do use that in the morning to get the temperature of the house up initially but it, it can only go so far. It's not designed to heat, it's actually designed to cool you down. It's designed as air conditioning, not as heating. No, so yes, Michael. although, what's up? Oh, you've all finished? Oh, there's plenty there still. Do you, want, you want me to do some? Yeah. All right, let me finish talking and then I'll do some for you, okay? So yes, it can heat the house up, but not very well, really. The air coming out is not stinking hot, you know? And it just, just doesn't seem to permeate the house as well as gas heating would. And um, so, and it's expensive. Like before we had any other heating in the house, we used to only have that and our electricity bill was ginormous. It's the only way that we heat the house and it's the only way we can heat water to have you know, hot water in the house as well. So our electricity is pretty expensive. And I know eventually we do want to get some solar panels, but at the moment, it's not an option. Um, so we have finally got our wood heater installed and that's been pretty exciting. And why I'm rambling on about this like some crazy off the top, off the point pregnant woman <laughs> is because it takes time to build a fire. It takes a little time to build it. It's not just something you can just snap your fingers and bam, there's a fire. And not only does it take time, it takes time to heat the house. When it's roaring and it's been going for a few hours, yeah, sure. It heats the house amazingly. It's a real warm kind of heat, as in it's cozy, as opposed to the air conditioner which just blows hot air into the ceiling. This is a real cozy, warming kind of beautiful kind of heat, which just seems to permeate everywhere. Um, but it takes time. So first thing in the morning when you wake up, when it's cold, it's cold. And you can't just flip on the gas ducted heating like we're used to and warm up the house. It just is not an option anymore. Um, and I'm talking about this because it just changes your approach to life. You know, not only do you have to spend the time to collect firewood, collect sticks, collect kindling, collect tinder, so you can start the fire. You have to carve out time in your day to actually start the fire because you can't just light a match on a stick and walk out. That's not how, if you've tried to start a fire before, that's not how they work. 
not only do you have to have time for that, you have to have carved time to tend to it because they can go out pretty easily. You really need to nurture it until it's roaring and then you can kind of leave it for an hour or two. But the bigger thing is you can't leave a fire for like five hours. I can't go out for the day for five hours and come back. The fire will be out. It cannot last that long. Um, will there be warmth coming out of it still? Probably, but then I have to constantly revive it with fresh tinder, fresh kindling and fresh small logs. And that takes a lot of effort. And it's just a different approach to living life. Like you have to really plan ahead. Is it worth my energy to start a fire now? Do I start a fire later? I've got to make sure it's hot enough for tonight before the temperature really drops into the negatives. And I don't know, it's just for some, I'm sure this would be perceived as the most irritating, um, unpleasant thing. But for us, it's been this real, I don't know, this romantic dream, I guess, of just living more simply, starting a fire, enjoying the warmth, and just living life in a very different way. So that's my ramble about fireplaces. We're, oh, you know what else though? <laughs> Uh, we've acclimatized to it so like this morning I think we woke up to six degrees Celsius and we we're like oh it's pretty warm today six degrees oh there's no way in Melbourne when we were living in the city that six degrees was perceived as warm so I find that very entertaining now the other thing I've been doing while I've been lying in bed dying or feeling like I'm dying I really want to get my vegetable garden started this spring so September October this year I want to be able to get started at least are you okay there what are you doing? <laughs> and um, well, I don't want to plant straight into the ground. For one thing, I don't think the ground's, the dirt here is very good. Excuse me. And for the other thing, I don't really want to bend over to maintain the garden, um, harvest food, and that's just not my thing. I want it to be a bit off the ground. Also deters bugs and slugs and stuff like that. And we have a lot of kangaroos, and I'm concerned that if there's planters in the garden like as in straight in the ground a kangaroo can come up and straight eat it but i feel like i could be wrong because i'm well, not new to this i mean i am new to this i'm not knowledgeable in it i feel like if it's in a box they're less likely to come and eat out of it because it's a bit more scary so i've been doing tons of research trying to find the right kind of garden bed box at the right price and the style that i like and Luckily enough, I found this amazing couple in Melbourne who, on the outskirts of Melbourne, who make these pallet garden beds. And I got six delivered late, late last night. Uh, I'll show them to you actually. They look beautiful. I can't wait to, to fill them up with dirt and use them. Wait, I wanna go, I wanna go film the boxes. You wanna come with me? Let's go. So I'll show you these boxes. Now that I've seen them, I'm like, I think I need a few more. <laughs> The six should start me off. I'm actually planning on converting them into wicking beds. And what that means is that they will, um, they'll be self-watering. So I'll just turn you around. So here are the really cool garden bed veggie boxes that I got. Um, and we will, and they're already lined with like weed matting. They're made out of recycled pallets, so they're but mostly recycled materials. And, um, hey! and we will um, turn them into wicking beds, which means they'll be self-watering garden beds. They'll have a watering reservoir down the bottom, so which is good for the Australian hot summer, um, and it saves off water, it is better for plants, they stay hydrated better, but I'm so excited. These are gonna be our first six garden beds full of veggies to grow. Other than that, not much else has been happening. We've been having a lot of bonfires in the garden to try and burn off all of that rubbish that got collected from the storm in December. It's cold enough now to do it um, without being a fire hazard to the bush because we live in a high bush phone prior prone area. Um, so we've gotten through the majority of it. I think we've got, you know, if we had probably got 20% of our scrub left to, bu to burn and then it'll be all clean which I'm really excited about. Nick's been working at a big painting job so um, hopefully he'll finish that up soon so he can start on more renos. That's about it really. Hopefully I'll be able to give you another update soon. I'm having an amazing day and hopefully you can hear me in this crazy wind. <laughs> See you later guys. Bye. Run, 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 run. Are you running? Just in a circle, hey? <laughs>
Good running. Careful of the poo. Look. That's a big doo-doo poo. <laughs>